Hello guys, we're going to cover a new chapter today for this material science course. It's called Thermal Properties, okay, for materials. So what is it actually? It's actually the response of a material when heat is applied. So what happened to it? What happened to the metal? What happened to the ceramics? What happened to the polymer? Okay, I'm sure that all of you are very very familiar with this term heat capacity this needs no introduction so heat capacity is the ability of a material to absorb heat and this is the equation for the heat capacity the unit is in joules per mole per kelvin so this is dq over dt and q is the energy input while this Delta T is the temperature change in Kelvin. So you can, if you know your input energy, you know your temperature change, you can actually work out your heat capacity. So there are two ways to measure the heat capacity. The first one is the heat capacity constant pressure. This is measured at constant pressure. And the second one is CV in which the heat capacity is measured at constant volume. So most of the time, CP is always larger than CV. All right. Next, we have vibrational heat capacity. This is new to you. So what is it actually? So um, you all know that atoms in solid materials, they are constantly vibrating. They are constantly vibrating at very high frequencies. The vibrations of the adjacent atoms, they are actually coupled by the virtue of the atomic bonding. So as you can see from this figure here, it shows many, many small balls. So what does it represent? So the blue color, it, all of these, they represent atoms. And the blue color actually represents the position of the atom displaced due to vibration. And the orange color is the position or the, the normal lattice positions for atoms. Okay, so due to this vibration, the atom is displaced or delocalized into a new location. So the vibration, they happen in a way that traveling lattice waves are produced. Now this whole thing, it shows traveling lattice waves. This whole thing, the dislocation, we call it lattice waves. So this also can be thought of as elastic waves. Or we can also call it as sound waves. So these waves, they have short wavelengths and very high frequencies. So the vibrational thermal energy for any material actually consists of a series of these elastic waves or lattice waves that have a range of distributions and frequencies and that only certain energy values are allowed and the energy is to be quantized and a single quantum of vibrational energy is called a phonon. So these elastic waves, they actually participate in the transport of energy during thermal conduction. Let's look at the next topic, what we call as temperature dependence of heat capacity. All right, so if you look at this graph here, so this figure actually shows the variation of temperature of vibrational contribution to the heat capacity at constant volume, which is CV. Okay, so you can see that the CV is zero when at zero Kelvin and it rises rapidly, rises very rapidly with temperature and this 
actually corresponds to the increased ability. So this actually corresponds to the increase of the ability um, of the lattice waves. Okay, with increasing temperature and at low temperature so we consider this as low temperature at low temperature the relationship between CV and T and the um, is given as this this is the relationship at this rapid increase or lower temperature where A here, what is A? A is temperature independent constant. So this is a constant. Alright. And this one is what we call as D by temperature. So this usually less than the room temperature. So above this D by temperature, the, you can see that CV actually levels off. Actually, it levels off and becomes almost independent of temperature. And the relationship of CV and temperature at this part above the Debye temperature is given by this relationship. CV equals to 3R, where R is the gas constant. Okay. So even though the total energy of the material is increasing with temperature, the quantity of energy required to produce a 1 degree temperature change is constant at this part and from atomic point of view energy is stored as atomic vibration as what we've seen before and as temperature increases the average energy of atomic vibrations will increase 